Oh, this is this this thing on? This one. Ah. I can be taught. All right, my task is to talk about uh, whether or not there's uh, evidence for primary treatment of distal humerus fractures with total elbow versus open reduction and total fixation. I have no disclosures. Total elbow bracelet as a primary treatment for fractures of the distal humerus. Well, if we're going to decide to do this, we got to know why should we or perhaps why shouldn't we. So if you look at why, from a conceptual standpoint, osteosynthesis of a distal humerus fracture, particularly an elderly patient, uh, is at best challenging and at least uh, frustrating because of the uh, poor bone quality, uh, the soft tissues around the elbow, and things that sort of confound your uh, high fives at the end of the case. Historically, total hip replacement or at least bipolar replacement for femoral neck fractures is well understood. And replacing proximal humerus fractures for non-reconstructable joints is an acceptable procedure, so why not the elbow? <clears throat> In the 90s, uh, Mayo Clinic with Bernie Mori and his company uh, sort of popularized this uh, more than it had been prior, where they took the elderly patient and did primary total elbow replacements on them. It was a retrospective study of 21 consecutive elbows uh, their follow-up was three years. Their scores were excellent in 15, good in five, and one had inadequate data. Uh, I skipped over that middle number there. 40% of these people had rheumatoid arthritis. So you're dealing with a little bit different patient biology, a little bit different uh, patient population, and trying to fix a distal humerus fracture in an older rheumatoid is even harder than the, the people we see. So their conclusions were that total elbow is a viable option for selected elderly non-reconstructable fractures with underlying arthritis. Reasonable conclusion. Other investigators over time looked at similar uh, data. In fact, the second study there is just those same people plus some more several years later out of the Mayo Clinic. Basically came up with the same conclusions. A uh, group in Toronto looked at a prospective randomized control study of 42 patients, 21 assigned to each group to compare functional outcomes, complications, reoperation rates uh, in these fractures treated in elderly patients. Five times the surgeon decided to convert to total elbow in the operating room. The, opera the uh, ORIF group had a higher incidence of reoperation. The DASH scores in the total elbow patients were better early, but at two years they all leveled out and they were pretty, pretty much the same. So those are the whys. Well, why not? Well, the elbow's not a hip and the elbow is not a shoulder, so it doesn't respond the same way that those do to primary uh, prosthetic replacement. And as a matter of fact, if you look at the data, as you're all aware, for proximal femur replacement or total hip for uh, fracture, the data is not as good as it is for uh, primary treatment for osteoarthritis, and that's a, a simple conclusion to come to owing to the soft tissue trauma that, that you rely on when you put a, a uh, prosthesis in. Infections in total elbows, expect them. It's much more common in a, even in a primary arthritic total elbow replacement in a rheumatoid, which is the primary indication. Uh, they have thin soft tissue envelopes that have been further compromised by the trauma. And if they have an underlying inflammatory disease, that's a setting for infection. Other complications that aren't necessarily unique to total elbows include extensor weakness, ulnar neuropathies, whether you transpose it or not. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, mechanical failures don't usually happen. The prosthesis doesn't break. What happens is it loosens. Aseptic loosening is about 10% of the time. If they're in for long enough and successful, there's going to be bushing wear because it's a sloppy implant and there's stress on the plastic. And periprosthetic fractures can be really difficult to manage. Heterotopic ossification can also occur, again, not unique to the total elbow when you're treating a primary uh, comminuted elbow fracture. So what kind of decisions do you have to make? You have to make a pre-op decision about whether you're going to do a total elbow as the primary treatment or an in-game decision. And that's going to affect how, what uh, approach you decide on and a couple other things, like what equipment you have in the room, HO prophylaxis with uh, post-operative indocin or whatever your drug of choice is, and should you radiate them pre-operatively. <coughs> do you do it in an airflow room like you do, do, would do with a total joint with minimum room traffic? Uh, most people do them in the lateral position with a sterile tourniquet. And the universal posterior skin incident is usually the best way to go. Just avoid the beat up skin on whichever side of the electron it's beat up. Again, the, the in-game decision in terms of 
whether you shift to a total elbow. You can't obviously do an olecranon osteotomy and then put a total elbow in it. So if you have a really low intraarticular fracture that you think you need to do an olecranon osteotomy in order to see the articular surface for reconstruction, you probably should have made that decision beforehand. I'm, I'm sure that there are people in the room who are good at this. I, I am not. If I need to see the articular surface, I need to see it. I can't, I tried peeking on the two sides of the triceps and uh, doing the peels and I just, particularly with that comminuted bone, when you try to put those two pieces together, invariably, instead of it coming together like this, that happens or that happens and you end up with an incongruent joint, which is the reason you were there was to fix it. So I think the, the knock against the electron on osteotomy is the non-union. If you just pay attention to it, treat it like a real operation, it shouldn't happen. Uh, paratricipital technique for the, uh, whether you're doing it as a primary as your total elbow or your in-game decision, I think is the best way to go because you can, there's no triceps to repair. If you go on both sides of the triceps, you isolate the ulna nerve, get it out of the way, and you kind of evert the ulna, the fracture fragments almost fall out and it gives you perfect exposure for your total elbow without having to do anything. They don't have to worry about protecting the triceps repair in the post-operative time frame. So what do you do with the ulnar nerve, whether it's open reduction internal fixation or total elbow replacement? You should find the ulnar nerve, make sure it's out of the way, trace it down to the intersection of the heads of the flexor carpi ulnaris, and then make sure it doesn't lay on the plate. Turns out that those that were transposed actually had a higher, have a higher incidence of reoperation for ulnar nerves than the ones that you just kind of tuck over in the sub-Q, as long as they're not sitting on the hardware. Those, those tend to do better, uh, unless the patient had preoperative ulnar nerve symptoms, and then I think you're obligated to do a little bit more to it to get it out of harm's way. <clears throat> what do you do with the condyles if you do a total elbow? Again, the group in Toronto showed us that if you take out the condyles or you leave them in, uh, there's really no difference in the uh, loss of motion or the loss of strength. That's not to say they're great. That's to say that they're equally, equally as bad. So they all, they all lose strength. None of them get normal motion, but it doesn't matter whether your condyles are there or not in terms of insulin influencing that. All total elbow replacements uh, currently that work are implant uh, designed as semi-constrained. By definition, you lose all your ligament uh, stability. So you have to put that back in through the implant. So... There's a plastic thing in between the ulna and the humerus, and it's sloppy. And by sloppy, I mean it's, it's not, it's not a, a, a ring fit. It, it kind of wobbles back and forth to allow to the varus valgus. You know, the, the elbow is not planar with either the coronal or the sagittal plane. So to get your hand in space wherever you're going to do it, there's always uh, some rotational torque on it, which is, which is why the implants fail. They should all be cemented with antibiotic cement, maybe particularly in, in uh, fractures, uh, is the stuff you put in the antibiotic giving you the right coverage? I don't know, you put what's allowed to be mixed with, with the uh, cement. And radiolucent cement, can't tell it's loose, can't see all those uh, resorption things, but some people swear by it. I, I use regular cement so I can see my failures. Uh, Post-operative plan, put them in a bulky dressing and elevate them. Some people immobilize them in extension. That's primarily for triceps uh, tendon uh, protection. Most patients will not tolerate being immobilized in extension for very long. Uh, you move them as soon as they're comfortable. And for me, safe early range of motion is when the wound is healed, particularly after trauma when the skin about the elbow has been beaten up. And a total, total elbow carries with it a lifetime lifting restriction. So the younger the patient and the more active the patient is, the more likely this is to fail uh, or for you to change their life by putting those restrictions on them. Well, what about ORIF? Technology with pre-contoured periarticular locking plates uh, has really been a game changer. Uh, there's a couple other old heads in the room here. We used to take uh, LCDCP plates and put them on the posterior aspect and bend a uh, pelvic reconstruction plate and put it on the medial side. The screws are 3.5. You got little pieces of bone. Sometimes the screw was bigger than the fin on the medial side, and it really wasn't optimal. But now with uh, the periarticular plating systems and the smaller constructs and locking the plates, we get much better fixation distally than, than you could before. So it, the, the opportunity to get a good outcome from an open reduction uh, has been technologically enhanced. Uh, parallel locking constructs, the O'Driscoll parallel with the uh, arch or the uh, orthogonal plating all have their proponents. 
If you look at the literature, basically the bottom line is the configuration does not make that big a difference if you have no bone loss. If you have bone loss in the coronal plane, then you're better off with 90-90 plating. If you don't, then parallel plate. Same decisions about the uh, surgical approach, paratricipital windows, the triceps peel, the electron on osteotomy. All of them end up with about the same degree of triceps weakness, so you should use either what you're comfortable and familiar with and or what you need to do to see the olecranon or the uh, articular surface. Please do not be afraid of the olecranon osteotomy. Complications of ORIF are not unlike those of total elbow, but they're in a little bit different order. They don't get infected, infected as often, but they do get stiff. You get non-unions and malunions. You get hardware failure. Same issue with the ulnar nerve and same issues with heterotopic ossification. Failure rates have re reported anywhere from 7 to 27. Again, this is the elderly patient. And again, for those of you uh, of my generation, they're talking about us. You know, they talk about the elderly patients over 60. I hope they're like really old papers and like 80 is the new 60. In any event, open reduction should still be your first choice. It's still the gold standard under most circumstances uh, to treat uh, distal humerus fractures. Plate and screw technology has greatly enhanced our ability to achieve uh, stable fixation even in osteoporotic bone. Total elbow is a reasonable option. If the patient is age appropriate, you deem the articular surface to be non-reconstructable. Uh, it's a very distal fracture, a low uh, below the fossa fracture. The bone is incredibly osteoporotic or the patient is a poor rehab candidate. And they always put that on there. I'm not sure I get that because you have to be a participant in rehab and an obedient patient in order for the total elbow to survive with the lifting restrictions and things you're gonna be confined to. Expect a complication if you do a total elbow for a fracture, whether it's an infection, loosening, or polywear eventually. Wound issues early, ulnar nerve injuries later. Some of them are transient. Uh, some of them need to be uh, neuralized. If you suspect infection, work it up just like you would any other in, uh, total joint infection and stage procedure with uh, uh, explantation, antibiotics, and then replantation is appropriate. Uh, Periprosthetics fractures will be the bane of your existence. They lose bone because of the wear that's occurred beforehand. That's why they fracture. The cortex gets thinned out and you get pieces of potato chip and you almost always have to use some type of allograft uh, strut or an allograft itself to replace the missing bone. So in conclusion, ORIF versus total elbow, you choose, choose wisely. Thank you. <laughs>